we got three things to talk about today. The Bronco Sport has been spotted in new and different camo. We're gonna analyze that. The body on frame version of the Bronco versus the Wrangler. There's some spy photos of that. We're gonna look at those and analyze those too. And there appears to be some new Mustang Mach 1 spy photos. So we're gonna get all into that. Today is a full on Ford show. My name is Eric. I make videos on future cars and trucks. If that's interesting to you, please consider subscribing. Hey, there's also a Discord chat link down below so you can chat about cars to your heart's content. So first up, the Bronco. This is the baby Bronco. This is gonna be called the Bronco Sport. Previously, there was rumors that it was gonna be called the Maverick, but it seems like everybody has adopted the name Sport. So this is the unibody. It is based on the Ford Escape. And by the way, if you don't know, and you probably do know because you're watching this video, this is gonna be a 2021 model. We're expecting the debut sometime, maybe in April. So you can clearly see where the bumpers are here for the first time in the camo. Previously in the camouflage versions, we've seen a lot of foam, but looking at this, it appears that we've just got a light covering on the hood and the doors. And of course, we've got some interesting camo in front of the headlights too. We're gonna to talk about that. Now, going to the side, and you can see that we've got pretty short overhangs front and rear, especially rear. And this is good for angle of approach and angle of departure. So this is sort of positioning uh, the Bronco really for some difficult off-road terrain. So even though this is based on the Ford Escape, this is really a much more aggressive vehicle. This is a much less of a city sort of SUV, CUV type thing and really a little bit more aimed towards off-roading. But I've got some caveats and we're gonna talk about that in a second. So we can see these steelies, these steel rims. These are kind of cool. They're actually great if you wanna go off-roading and not mess up your nice rims. I'm all about that. It's got some Falcon Wild Peak AT. These are all-terrain tires. I can't exactly make out the size. I'm thinking these are 30 inches, something like that, if you have a better clue. Uh, I tried to zoom in on the photograph, but I just couldn't see the tire size here at all. So this is, I guess it's gonna be a bit of a trail-focused vehicle too. I'd say it's a cross between some city and some light trail use. Now, what's interesting about these photos here is that the windows are down, which is kind of odd. The street sign in the background is blurred out and there's no interior shots, even though the window is down. So who do you think took these photos? I'm thinking either potentially the driver or somebody who knew the driver pretty well. It's interesting that we're seeing all these leaks really close to the uh, reveal that we're hopefully gonna see in April. There's a lot of leaks right now and they're just a little bit I don't know, I'd call them suspicious perhaps, but it's pretty clear that Ford is leaking these vehicles quite intentionally to sort of build up the hype. It's uh, something that vehicle manufacturers do all the time. If you were following the C8 Corvette, which I did extensively, there was a ton of leaks right before the debut. And by the time we got the debut, which was uh, last July in Tustin, and I finally saw the C8, it looked pretty much exactly like the camo. So take that as you will. This has still got a little bit more camo on it. And let's go around to the back. So we got these very funny labels that are dual exhaust. I, I guess this is perhaps one of the test vehicles that in their fleet and they wanna have an easy way of identifying it for the test drivers. I'm a little bit confused by that. There's also a number of yellow labels on here. I've been trying to make it out, I've been zooming in, but these photographs are fairly pixelated, at least the versions that we're getting. I'm sure on the photographer's spy camera, they are gonna be better. Okay, so I just looked it up. These were taken with a Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. This is a pretty expensive, this is a high-end camera. This was taken with a zoom lens, a 28 to 300 zoom lens, and this photograph is actually from a fairly prominent or fairly well-known spy photographer. So I think what we're looking at here is perhaps the test driver gave a little clue or somebody gave a little clue to the spy photographer. We don't have interior photos yet, but I think considering that the windows are down, maybe we're gonna see some spy photos, some better spy photos of the interior. These photos were taken on 214, so they were held in reserve, I guess you could say, for a little while before they are actually published. It's kind of interesting. Now we have pretty light camo on the doors and the fenders and so forth, but on the roof we have this sort of interesting piece here that looks a little bit like 
It's not a ski rack, but it seems to be sort of covering up something, and it does seem to be very similar to the body and frame, the mid-sized Bronco that we're seeing, which is going to have a removable roof. I do not expect this to have a removable roof, but it's something is interesting that's going on here. You can see that the height of the camo extends above the windshield by a couple of inches. So something is up here, either it's designed to just throw us, which is entirely possible, they could be just trying to deceive us, or there could be something going on with the roof here. Perhaps they've got some integrated roof racks. I don't know. So let me know down below what you think is going on with the roof. Now looking at these dual exhausts, this gives me a clue that we're probably looking at the V6 version, most likely the 2.7 liter V6, the EcoBoost. I talked about it before in other applications in the Ford line. It makes about 325 horsepower, 400 pounds-feet of torque. That's actually quite healthy. That is really more than the Jeep Wrangler makes right now. But if you're looking at these exhaust pipes, you can see that there are some pretty serious kinks in them. This is nothing anywhere close to production. These kinks would restrict the exhaust flow quite seriously, so it's kind of odd that we're seeing an exhaust like this on what is, perhaps this is still a test mule and not really a pre-production prototype. It's a little bit confusing. And this is the first time we've seen these dual exhaust labels. Again, this could be just all misdirection for us. It's really kind of quite odd. Now, another thing that I'm seeing is this definitely appears to have an independent rear suspension, much like the Jeep Renegade, which is independent all the way around. We know that the bigger Bronco, the body and frame, the mid-sized one has a solid rear axle and independent front suspension. This does appear to be independent all the way around. So the fact that the rear suspension is independent makes me think of a couple things. First, Ford positioned this vehicle as a small rugged utility in this PowerPoint that they had a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago, I can't quite remember. And it also makes me think about the Jeep Renegade as well. So is Ford positioning the Sport, the Bronco Sport, the smaller one, against the Jeep Renegade? It looks to be a bigger vehicle so far, although it's a little bit difficult to, to really say exactly how big it is. But it does make me question the off-road capabilities to some degree. The Renegade in the Trailhawk version has 8.7 inches of suspension travel. It's actually pretty good. So I think this is really going to be positioned as a cross between city driving and you know light trail use. That's my take on it. Next, we're going to talk about the body on frame, the midsize Bronco versus the Wrangler. So we have another photo, and by chance, there's a Jeep Wrangler in this photo too. This is the JK Wrangler. That was the last generation. The current Wrangler generation is the JL. By the way, if you have any tips, hit me up on Instagram. It's on screen. It's the same as my channel. I will maintain your confidentiality and anonymity. And also, if you have any good renders, hit me up there too. Now, the JL has very similar dimensions to the JK. It's about 2.5 inches longer. In this photograph here, we're looking at a two-door. Now remember, comparing these two vehicles, that the Jeep is slightly in the foreground in every shot, so it's a little bit difficult to compare the size directly, but it's pretty clear that the overall proportions and the dimensions, even though it's four-door versus two-door, are pretty similar. So we can see how Ford is positioning this vehicle, the Bronco, to go pretty much directly up against the Wrangler. You can see the windshield angle, the A-pillar is very, very similar. It's got a similar angle, a similar rake to it. Now, one thing that is quite different is that on the Jeep, the mirrors are mounted on the doors, whereas on the Bronco, they are mounted on the A-pillars. That should make the doors on the Bronco easier to remove. We can also see that the Ford has some type of running board, or perhaps it's an integrated rock slider. That's actually my guess. I think that's what it is. Looking at these two vehicles from behind, you can see we're talking about very similar proportions. Once again, even though the Jeep is closer, we have the spare right on the rear door. And the Bronco has smaller tires in this particular photo. I don't know that that's indicative of anything in particular. So now, the one thing that I'm noticing is that the Jeep has fender flares and the Bronco does not, even though they appear to be fairly similar in width. So that leads me to think that the Bronco is going to have more interior space, perhaps quite a bit more than the Jeep does. And that could be a pretty significant advantage in the marketplace. The Jeep is a little bit crowded on the interior, but Jeep has been doing this for a long, long, long time. They've got the dimensions of their vehicles 
pretty much honed down to a T. Looking at the Bronco compared to the Wrangler in the front, the Bronco does appear to have a much lower bumper, which would be bad for angle of attack. However, we are looking at some camouflage here. The front of the nose is pretty heavily camouflaged. You can see the Jeep bumper is quite high up. I suspect that the bumper is a little bit higher, but it doesn't look to be as high as the Jeep. Once again, we are looking at this from an angle. It looks like it's from across the street, perhaps. If you want to get into a little bit of conspiracy theory here, by the way, this is bronco6g.com. The photographer, again, I checked it out. This is the same photographer as the last Bronco Sport that we just had earlier in the video. Same lens, same camera, same photographer. It was taken on February 11th and it was also held back for a while and finally released on Bronco 6G quite recently. So it's pretty clear that the spy photographer is getting some inside information from Ford. If you want to call it a conspiracy theory, you can call it what you will, but Ford is definitely having these photos deliberately leaked. They're driving them around on the street. They're developing hype. That's what the game is. This is the name of the game in the spy photo world and in the promotional world at Ford and other companies too. This is a, a long history and they are building up enthusiasm for the vehicle. I think they're doing a pretty good job. I'm pretty excited for it myself. And next up, we're gonna look at the latest Ford Mustang news. The current generation of the Mustang is the S550. And we know that the S650 is gonna be coming out as a 2022 model. In fact, I made a video on that. I'll link it right over here. I also did a video on the Mach 1, the upcoming Mach 1 Mustang before too. So comparing these spy photos that we're seeing now against the Mach 1 photos that we looked at previously, this appears to be a different vehicle and it actually looks like we're taking a step back to some degree. So the green paint, this is dark Highland green. This is a signature paint that Ford has been using. This leads me to think that maybe this is the Mach 1. However, what we're seeing here on the front is very heavy camouflage compared to the previous version that was driving around Detroit. There's also no front splitter, although we do have some side skirts too, so perhaps they're removed. But it looks like the front is gonna be significantly different here, or they're hiding something. I think it's got 19 or 20 inch wheels on it. So is this a redesign for the Mach 1 Mustang? So if this is the upcoming Mach 1, which would be available in 2021, my guess is that it's gonna have a mix of the performance parts available in the bullet and also the Performance Pack 2. So maybe it's gonna be somewhere in the middle. You can see this vehicle has pretty large Brembo brakes. Going out to the rear of the car, we have dual exhaust, but it only has two tips which is kind of interesting. And something else interesting too is that this vehicle appears to have the 2018 headlights and it does not have the slightly wider fenders. And the turn signals are below the light element too. So perhaps this is some sort of powertrain mule because this is not so aggressive looking. It doesn't look as aggressive as the last spy photos that we saw. This could be a bullet, this could be a Mach 1. You probably know this, but the special editions that Ford has been alternating with are the Mach 1 and the bullet, at least those are the two main special editions they have been releasing over the last couple of decades. So considering that there's a lot of bullets sort of still sitting on dealer parking lots right now, I think this is probably the Mach 1. It's difficult to say because this is sort of a step back from the previous spy Mustangs that we've seen cruising around. We've got a pretty nice render from Modern Muscle Ace. He's on Instagram. I think it's a pretty cool render of what his version of the 2021 Mustang might look like. He's also got a comparison of the 2019 Bullet, the 2021 prototype, and the 2017 GT350. So I'm gonna link his Instagram down below here too. So I don't really think this is gonna be the next GT because the S650 is gonna be pretty soon. So when can we expect to see this vehicle? If this is indeed going to be a 2021 version of the Mach 1, this is probably gonna be at the New York Auto Show, which is gonna have its debut around April 8th. I'm gonna be there. Let me know down below what you think this Mustang actually is. These two videos on screen right now, my name is Eric. Thank you for all the support lately. If you like these videos, please go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.